If I had to guess? Yeah. In my life, probably 30. Oh. <laughs> At least 50. Yeah. Well over 100. Uh, 227. <laughs> God, at least 2,000. Since I want to try and make a living with theater, like I want to be as prepared as possible right. so I can, you know, hopefully get it. Yeah, I do actually. Really? I like the challenge of it. I, um, I love the butterflies. I love the anticipation of possibly being in front of people that could help finally make my career more of a reality. Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's uh, it, it's a challenge. Yes and no. I, I get those butterflies in my stomach, and it's different than the excitement of performing, because because it just is. You know, performing. You've worked with the director. You know what you're doing. You're going on stage to do what you and the director talked about. Auditioning. You have no idea what the director might want. Sometimes. There are some auditions that I leave the room and I'm like, yes, this is why I do this, because that was a wonderful experience. But there's also days where you leave the room and you're like, why am I doing this? This is awful. Not at all. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. Like the, the, the monologue audition, come in and do a, do a speech from a play, that, that to me is absurd. Of the types, I like a, a cold reading from the script, you know, with, with a bunch of people. Okay, it depends on who I am auditioning for. If I already know them, it's a little more comfortable. But if I don't know them, then it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> and I hate it the most then. Uh, cold reads are terrible. Get rid of them. They're awful. How can you really see what a character or person is like in that role if you make them read from a piece of paper? You can't. It's just like when you get a script out of um, your hands in rehearsal process in the room like that, especially when it's like everybody in the same room together, there's a part of me that comes out that is not who I am normally. Like normally I'm very reserved. I like, I'll, I'll park in the corner with my beer and watch the room. But I learned very quickly that if you do that in that kind of audition, you're done. There's, there's, there's nothing for a wallflower. There was a time where I really despised it just because I, I always second guess myself. So I, I always go in thinking I know what I'm doing. I sit in front and then everything leaves my head and I start freaking out. It's like the one time I start getting stage fright. And then after a while, it started easing up on me when I started getting to know all the directors. And it's like, okay, we know each other, so now it's a lot less stressful. Call it an advantage or not, um, I have the ability to look at words and um, very short term memorize them. I don't have to read as much. You know, I can always tell someone like who has, say, you know, dyslexic or has some kind of reading reading issues like that that's going to totally hamper them in a, in, a, in a cold reading I can I can almost look at you in the eye and just kind of take a quick and then you know so I can actually act with you um, in a in a cold reading and not everybody can a lot of people are still doing this I and mean, there's no chemistry there's no energy flow there's nothing get rid of cold reads <laughs> then I got into other auditions and I'm like okay this is very professional and this is really scary. No. <laughs> I don't know anybody who does. It's just so nerve wracking though. I mean, if you, especially if it's a part you really, really, really want. And then when they, just, and, and, and if they have you in the theater with other people so you could see the audition. 10 a year, maybe? It tends to be at least one a week, either video or in person. Seven to 10 per month. If if I've been invited to callbacks, I'm usually in the show, in, in some way. Enough to keep you working, so. I don't want to say most of the time, but most of the time? <laughs> On camera, once every 10 times, maybe. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Uh, and uh, theater, I don't know, a little better odds. Hardly ever. I was lucky enough to be somewhat of a cast member of a company, so I always kind of had a spot. More times than not. Not very often. If I, if, if I do, it's because the offer has come out of the blue and I'm already booked for something else. Because it's so much work to do a show, and if it's a role that someone says, I really want you in it, and then you read it, and you're thinking, uh... I don't know if I have any least favorite roles, in all honesty. Because you always get something out of whatever you do. To work with someone 
who's not giving you what you need in order to give your best. So you can either look at it as like, Ugh, I hate this, or you can look at it as, all right, this isn't my favorite, but I'm learning something from it. So I would say like any role that I've already done before is not, I, there's nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to do a show in my underwear. I like to make some kind of discovery about humanity. Audition. I like to try and do something new every time. I don't want to do the same one over and over again. Um, I don't know that I really have one. It kind of really depends on the on the audition. Because that could be embarrassing if somebody was there and said, oh, I remember her doing that two years ago. One of them, Richard Dreyfus, I think, said that he doesn't he doesn't prepare very much. He just kind of like gets the gets the feel of it, doesn't memorize anything and there's a lot of crying. <laughs> and he, he like was saying, you know, don't prepare too much because you want to be fresh and, and everything. And, and so I've used that and it's worked to my advantage some and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> There's a lot of set, like choosing a song or a monologue, going through it for about a month. Be like, nope, don't like this, starting over. Uh, I print out the sides or information, I go through it, highlight, make the little actor notes, you know. Um, unless they're looking for a certain type of character. And I've got just so many within me <laughs> that I pull whoever she is out and just start kind of envisioning her and how she'd be in those situations or whatever. Wow, I usually okay. start a month or two ahead because I want to be as prepared as possible. I'll start working decide I don't like the monologue anymore, start a new monologue, decide after a couple weeks don't like that, then go back to the original one. Okay, so X equals... 15. Very good. All right, so number 23, more shapes. So find the area of the triangle. Find the area. Lexi? Well, I drink lots of water. No. Um, honestly, I, as an actor, they say you're supposed to have like five monologues in the bank, ready to go at any time. So you have that variety of monologues and... Um... Well, I definitely read the script twice. I read it once to see if it's a show I want to do. I would say in the beginning, I'd probably panic for like the entire day and be like, this audition tonight and it really get to me and I was just like alright and then um, but as the years progressed I kind of went um, this is a lot of wasted energy but this audition is like 12 hours from now. If it's a general audition I just go in with the same song and monologue that I know I'm the strongest at and um, if it's for a specific role the dramaturg in me buys the script, I read it, I read analysis on it, I watch movies, I watch stage, you know I just really absorb everything because I'm obsessive that way. <laughs> so. But it's hard to find a really powerful or funny or something that's really going to stand out. It's hard to find sometimes and I don't have time to read plays all the time. I'm usually working on a show so I'm learning that script. I don't have time in between to read stuff for fun. As, as much as I would like to, I don't. Yeah. Uh, would I lie to you? I never said you were lying. Yes, you did. <laughs> No, I said she wouldn't remember. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? Look, I just mean that maybe your mind probably isn't what it used to be. <laughs> I'm sorry? I just mean... Alright, now you're calling me old. No, I meant that... <laughs> what did you mean? I mean... <laughs> in any case, it wasn't Ohio. Some commercial or some... I was playing a dad who is teaching his daughter to fish. A major car brand yesterday. I, you know, when I don't get something, I like, I try to forget. I'm getting pretty good at forgetting. My best case scenario in an audition is when I leave the room and I'm heading towards my car or, or whatever, that I felt like, well, if they're looking for me, I gave them every reason to cast me. Mm -hmm. That's my best case scenario. And uh, The best audition there is no best audition. They're all horrible. <laughs> They're all horrible. That's one thing about acting that like I'm trying to like, I'm trying to get down to this day is like, I'm not operating on anyone's brain, you know? Russell. 
I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Come with me. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh my gosh, probably my worst just recently. A homeless man walked in in the middle of it and started dragging a table across the floor. And I, after he had finished that and he left, I said, um, would you like me to start over? And they said, no, you're good. I got this great audition to audition for all these agents. I started doing my monologue, completely left my mind halfway through, and I just sat there, stood, at, stood looked at him, it's like, I got nothing, and I just walked away because I couldn't remember it. Oh at wow! All. I was like, "Sorry to waste your time," and I was just like, "I don't, I don't have it." I tried auditioning for an opera one time, and I thought, "Yeah, I don't sing opera. I'll just pretend like I sing opera." Well, the worst one was definitely the one in my underwear, because I thought I wanted the part, <laughs> and I knew that the whole first scene was in their underwear, and so I just decided I was gonna audition in my underwear. <laughs> I walked in and apparently I'm like, that, that's a whole other realm of auditioning. Like, you do not get close to the panel. I didn't know that as a physical actor. I'm like, hi, how's it going? I'm Shauna. And that was not the right thing to do. Um, worst audition was probably any number of generals. General auditions is just, it's the whole, do two monologues and sing 32 bars of music? Okay. <laughs> and then I pretended to sing opera, and they could see right through me. <laughs> and at the end of it, I was out in the hallway because they said, you know, we'll let you know if you have a callback. There'll be callbacks later today. And I was in the hallway, and so I was waiting, waiting, waiting for a couple hours. Hadn't heard anything. And I asked the person outside the door, I was like, hey, so when is there, when will we know about callbacks? And things and she just looked at me and said I don't think you would ever get a call back. I dropped the note that I wanted and started lower than I should have and it just went from there but what I've always been told is if you're wrong stay wrong so I just kept singing at the notes that I wanted regardless of what the piano was playing. So why this tree? What? Why this tree? Uh, like, why did dad want his ashes scattered here? Seriously? This is the old oak, Angie. This is the old oak? Yes. The one from all those stories? How did you know? Why did you not know that? No, I guess I just never really thought about it. One, if I'm going in there, because I'm not a trained singer yet, I'm, my head is gonna be, I hope I don't screw up the song. Yeah. Even when I'm doing the monologues, the thing that I'm good at. So I mess up all three things. I showed up to an audition where I had been invited to audition. And this director didn't acknowledge that I was there. I was handed a bunch of sides. I sat there for two hours while we were all in the same room, was never called up to read. After you know two hours, I had another audition, so I needed to go. So I went to turn my sides in and say, thank you, I have to leave. And then as I was told, okay, thank you for coming, I smelled alcohol on the director's breath. But I like it because there is more of a challenge there to convey certain feelings um, with comedy. You can do so much physically uh, with, you know, physical comedy, verbal comedy, you know, just an eye roll, you know, it, that can be funny. But with, so with drama, you, I don't, there's different tricks to pull from. Drama, which is strange because like, like with the roles I've been getting in the last couple of years, um, I am now known by the people who have only known me for those years as the screwball comedy guy. Like any kind of broad physical comedy, call Chris. He can 
and, and which is that's so I can do it and I have fun doing it but it's it's not what I enjoy go that goes off like a switch on and off switch sometimes I'm like oh comedy 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 and then I'm like ah you know what I could use a nice new drama you know a drama and then I'm drama 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 so it just depends it depends on what's going on I like both comedy seems to me more it's gonna be strange to say but more pessimistic you know, for me, a tragedy is optimistic. A tragedy says that, hey, as a human being, we, we, we have this great potential and we fall short. Right. But if we can learn and we get better next time, that's what, it, that's what the, the tragic or the drama says. You know what? I really prefer drama. However, I get cast in comedy all the time. Like, I want those meaty, juicy, deep roles so badly mm. and I can do them but rarely are they offered to me. So I think it's because I've got such an outgoing personality. A comedy says, like, human beings are messed up. There's nothing we can do about it. So let's at least, you know, let's watch them trip on the banana and fall down and say, thank God it's not me. Right. I mean, that, there's nothing hopeful. What is this about? Oh, that. Look, Marshall, I have a lot of work. Can it wait? No, Eric. I mean, what's this about? You write T-Rod and me a letter. And you expect us not to say anything. I mean, why not an email? Why not a text? Hell, why not walk to our okay, desk? We work okay. 10 yards away. I hear you. No more letters. Didn't mean to spook you. It's just a fragile matter that I didn't feel comfortable being open about. To my students, like all the time, is, is one is read the play, um, have a good idea of what you really, really want. Don't be so afraid that you don't get an opportunity to enjoy just doing it. And then have a couple of backups. How fun is it just to get a chance to audition? You know, enjoy it. Recognize that a director, again, a director who's worth anything, is um, is not looking for a puppet, um, but is looking for someone they can collaborate with. Breathe. <laughs> just keep breathing. Um, everything is going to be fine as long as you show up and you show up on time and you're pleasant. So if you go in doing the part one way and then a director gives you some feedback and then you go totally the director's way, then the director says, well, okay, I've got a puppet here. Nothing interesting, there's nothing challenging, there's no, there's no sense of give and take, but if you can still take the essence of how you see the character and mesh with what the director's gonna see, then you're actually giving something to the director too. Uh, I love, um, there was a comment that Brian Cranston made about him auditioning that always stuck with me, which was um, he said he never got more roles than when he decided, okay, I'm going to go in to give them, like, this is what I have to offer. This is the character that I have to offer. And leave, and just leave it there. So that, that I think, is, is where a lot of actors just um, fall flat. Or they go the other way around, where they, like, push back so hard against the director. Okay, now the director sees like this is someone I can't work with at all. Like I can't, they can't take direction. Their ego is so caught up in um, what they have like predetermined. Right? Or if I give you, or if I give you direction and um, you do it the exact same way. Well, okay, you know, this, like, there are so many, there are so many landmines in, right. in an audition that um, if you just have a little common sense, you can avoid them. Right? A lot of those things are so not personal at all. It's not as scary as it as it may seem, and to just be yourself. It's two minutes, right? <laughs> really? It's about two minutes, they cut you off anyway. Just try and show them who you are the best you can, but not to sweat it too much. Uh, be yourself, you know? You're not chosen because you have brown hair. Okay. You're not chosen because you're too young, you know? And you can't take those things personally. They want somebody unique and that has like that certain something. I can't, I'll, I'll, every single time I hope I'm the one who has that certain something, of course. Or something that makes you feel confident, something you see yourself and go, I look good in this, I feel really good in this. This is for beer. Thank you. If you need some help, if you just ask, I will totally give you a handout. I don't have my wallet with me. Might I give you $20 tomorrow? No. It's a, it's a prudent response. Okay, uh, I could do dishes. No, this is a bar, and there's no one in here. All right, then what the hell can I do then? You can pay for it. 
Uh, directors always look for, you know, if you're actually enjoying what you're doing. And so if you flub a bit, it's not the end of the world because they still might like your personality that you had. So have a strong personality. That, that helps a lot. Do your homework. Okay. You look familiar. Must have one of those faces. Must be. You think with a pretty face like yours, you think I'd remember a little easier. Thank you. So it's none of my business, but what were you doing on the side of the road at six in the morning? Do you live around here? My car had a flat tire. I was just trying to look for some help. I see. Have fun. Fun is the key for me because, you know, it's, you go into an audition and you can project so much on what the situation is going to be like, but ultimately you, you have no idea what it's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's, there, you can learn a lot by getting a bunch of actors in a room together doing some simple, you know, drama games or improv exercises with them. Non-comedic improv. I think. And, once you, and then once you've built a relationship with, with a director, I think, you know, give me a call, we'll go have a beer, we'll talk about the play, um, and see if our ideas can kind of, can kind of mesh about that. That's, that's something that's authentic. Everything an actor does in life is an audition. I mean, in a sense, I'm doing an audition right now because somebody might see this who likes or doesn't like what I'm doing. My, someone might see this and go, oh wow, I like that Tim, Tim Niffin. I'd like him to be in a show. And they may call me in for a, a callback based on what I'm doing right now, right? You may have seen somebody perform and just really think that they're perfect for a role, but if after five minutes of chit chat, you don't want to talk to them again, you don't want to give them that role. You'd I've even had auditions that I didn't know were auditions. Like somebody was studied the character they want forward and back and came in and tried to have a conversation with the director as that character. Thinking about making a movie or they've started making a movie and they're looking for somebody and they asked me to have coffee with them and so I went and had coffee with them and about an hour after I did that I went, oh, that was the audition. Costumes. I would do costumes. I love doing costumes. Um, I am actually really enjoying set design. Or I would like to at least try directing. I don't know if I really want to do it, but I want to try it once just to say, oh, okay. For the kids that I had this year, they could do lighting, they could do sound, they could do the other aspects, but set was a little too much for them. So um, I filled in that gap and it was a blast. I was making my little models with the phone core and... and... I collaborated on a lot of scripts that got put up on stage. Um... Um, and now I'm finding it's actually helped my directing a whole lot. You know, having the model in front of me allows me to actually take right. little characters and move them around and, and I, can, I can anticipate a whole bunch of problems. The fifth grade teacher decided to put on a school play. Well, she actually ended up putting on two. Uh, and she gave me the lead role in the first one. And then I got the, like, the co-lead in the second one. So it, it really, I've got to find her and I keep telling people this story. And Mrs. Brandt, where are, wherever you are, I don't know your first name, so I'm not sure how to find you, but I, I want to thank her very much for changing my life.